A poison gas shell struck nearby. A group of new recruits quickly pulled out their gas masks. Paul, who had stopped to help a classmate, ended up being the slowest one. This caught the attention of the lieutenant, who mocked Paul, saying he wouldn't survive the night. The lieutenant ordered everyone to remove their masks except Paul. They arrived at the front line trench, where artillery fire thundered nonstop. Their task was to scoop rainwater out of the trench. One recruit complained that his hands were numb from the cold. Hearing this, a veteran helped him hung his steel helmet on him and told him to worm his hands inside his pants. They all followed suit, and for the first time, they left on the battlefield. That night, Paul was assigned to keep watch. When he heard a noise, he fired a shot, but the muzzle flash revealed his position. In the next instant, a bullet flew toward him, but luckily, his steel helmet stopped it. Then enemy shells began raining down. Caught off guard, they had no choice but to hide in a dugout. The intense bombardment left them trembling in fear, and in that moment, the fantasy of becoming hero shattered. Paul woke up amidst the rubble. His comrades dug him out, but others nearby hadn't been as lucky. The battlefield was now a wasteland of scorched earth. Once he caught his breath, Paul joined the recovery team, tasked with collecting the dog tags of fallen soldiers. While searching, he came across a pair of glasses. He picked them up, recognizing them immediately they looked just like his friends. With growing unease, he began searching, and soon enough, he found his friend lying motionless not far away. Paul collected his friend's dog tag adjusted his uniform, and broke down in tears. Hearing the officer's call, he forced himself to keep gathering dog tags. Not long after, these tags were sent to the generals in the rear. In just a few weeks, tens of thousands had perished. But to the leaders, it was only a number. During a rare respite, the soldiers found joy in a small feast, savoring echoes they'd managed to steal from a farm. In a letter from home, they heard rumors of an impending ceasefire. But instead of peace, they were given orders to launch one final assault. After receiving the command to advance, Paul and his comrades charged forward without hesitation. One by one, the soldiers around him fell, yet Paul ran on, expressionless, dodging the rain of artillery. Finally, he made it to the enemy trench, where close combat began in brutal earnest. After a fierce struggle, they managed to take down several enemy soldiers. Seeing leftover food on a table nearby, their hunger overpowered their caution, and they devoured the meal desperately. Suddenly, the table shook, and bats began to scatter. It turns a massive enemy tank was approaching. They had never seen such a weapon before. Frantically, they fired their rifles, but their bullets were useless against the tank's armor. As the tank came within firing range, a single shell tore through their ranks, leaving chaos and terror in its wake. During the retreat, a shell exploded near Paul, flinging him aside and leaving him momentarily deaf. He couldn't hear a thing, but as he turned, he saw the brutal reality of war in all its horror. I during the retreat, Paul's caught by enemy soldiers. Paul lay still in the dirt, hoping that playing dead would save him, but he was soon discovered by one of the soldiers. Luckily, a shell exploded, saving him, but the enemy soldier was still alive. In a panic, Paul lunged at the soldier, stabbing him in the vital spots with his knife. When the soldier stopped resisting, Paul finally ceased his attack, fearing the enemy might scream for help and bring more soldiers. Paul shoved dirt into the soldier's mouth. At that moment, all that remained in Paul was terror. As he slowly calmed down, he noticed his hands were covered in red liquid. Looking at the suffering enemy soldier, he was horrified by how cruel he had become. He crawled over slowly, wanting to save the soldier's life. He tried to clean the dirt from the soldier's mouth with water and used bandages to try and stop the bleeding. But the soldier died in the end. Paul pulled out the soldier's wallet from his pocket and found a photo inside, showing the soldier's wife and daughter. This deepened Paul's guilt. He collapsed onto the soldier's body, whispering his regrets and silently atoning for his actions. A German soldier was sneaking around, stealing chickens from a French farm. Suddenly, he frowned see, it was because the farmer's son had spotted him. The soldier attempted to return the eggs he had taken, but before he could, the door was locked, trapping him inside. Panicked, he started searching for a way out. Outside, his comrades were growing anxious. He peeked inside and saw that Paul was being chased. The soldier dodged the farmer's bullets and managed to escape, and they both sprinted towards safety. Fortunately, the farmer wasn't very accurate with his shots. Once they reached a safe zone, Paul pulled a stolen egg out of his pocket. Even though it was raw, it felt like a rare delicacy to them. One of the soldiers wandered off into the woods alone. After relieving himself, he sensed something was wrong. When he turned around, he saw the same child from earlier. Hearing the gunshot, Paul rushed into the woods. He found his comrade had been shot. It didn't seem too severe, but they quickly decided to return to the camp. When he finally managed to carry the injured soldier to the meg, they were told it was too late had died. And now, only half an hour remained, until the full ceasefire would take effect. 